junior science communications here at the University of Minnesota on the Twin Cities campus. Today, I'm on Big Pequon Lake here in, Brim in Brimson, Minnesota. Big Pequon Lake is also known as Pequon Lake and is neighbor to small Pequon Lake, otherwise known as Smith Lake, the local community. Big Pequon Lake averages about 418 acres in area and reaches a maximum depth of about 33 feet. Big Pequon Lake is home to about 60 to 80 year-round residents and about 20 to 30 year-round households. Big Pequon Lake also has a very active local township. The township not only does social things, but also does many, many of the environmental tests as well. Volunteer residents from the area do things such as the Such a Death Test, which is done by lowering a metal disc down into the water to see what the vis how far the visibility can be seen. On average, Big Pequon Lake has a visibility of about 10 feet. Local residents also do testing on phosphorus levels, which is needed for plant growth, as well as chlorophyll levels, which is the green color of the lake. All three of these tests are included to measure TSI rating. TSI is measured on a scale of 1 to 100. Big Pequon Lake usually scores about a 40 on this, which means that it's clear most of the year, and towards the end becomes a little greenish. It also means that in the deepest parts of the lake, there is very little oxygen at the bottom in the water. Big Pequon Lake is also part of the St. Louis River watershed. St. Louis River spans about 192 miles, starting about 50 miles north of here and reaching all the way down to Lake Superior, just below Duluth, Minnesota. The St. Louis River is not only the largest river in the area, but it is also home to the biggest watershed, spanning about 3,600 acres of the northeastern region of Minnesota. It's, ho it's home to many different cities, such as Chisholm, Hibbing, Duluth, Cloquet, and even up into the Hoyt Lakes area. The St. Louis River watershed is also home to the Fond du Lac Band, which is a Chippewa and Ojibwe nation. It is the second largest ethnic Native American nation in the United States and has called the Great Lakes region home since about 800 AD. They use many of the resources given by the St. Louis River watershed, especially wild rice. The Fond du Lac Band recently teamed up with scientists in the area to do a natural capital evaluation of the St. Louis River watershed. This is an interesting study because the Fond du Lac Band is part of an ethnic Native American tribe and in most cases, they are not fans of putting monetary value on the land. But in this case, they did in order to show the significance of the possible injuries that things like public accesses, as well as mining, could have on the watershed and its, and its resources. This evaluation was done with four different things. These are provisioning services, regulating ser services, supporting services, and information services. Provisioning services are things like natural goods, food, water, and raw minerals. Regulating services are things that are given to us by the regular system of things. This is things like air quality, water quality, climate control, and other factors such as these. Supporting services are things like habitat and different sorts of um, habitat regulation. These give us things like genetics and different genetic coding. Last but not least is information services. This by far is one of the most impactful for the topic today. Information services are things that are how people communicate with their local surroundings. This is how people communicate with nature. Things like trails, national parks, public accesses, recreation, cultural things, and history. Information services play a huge role in a public access such as the one I'm talking about today. All in all, the St. Louis River watershed was found to be about 5 to $14 billion in worth every year, and these are conservative numbers. Today we're talking about the public access, which is bound to be where I'm standing now. This plot of land was bought by the Department of Natural Resources up here in the local area. They are looking to create a public access here on Pequon Lake, and many of the locals are concerned about what this could mean for the lake and the surrounding areas. Some of the biggest concerns are things like crime, trash, and invasive species. 
residents have voiced concern on crime being drawn to the area based on that we're so far out and there's not a whole lot of movement in the area. Also, trash has been a big talking subject as well. Obviously, with a public access comes much traffic, and that brings trash along with it. Local communities, trash is only picked up about once every two weeks. And that's a long time for a public access. The biggest concern by far, though, is invasive species. Things like zebra mussels, which range about finger size in fingernail size and give between 100 and 500,000 eggs every year. After the eggs hatch, it's about two to three weeks before they develop shells and begin to attach themselves to hard things. For most people, there's just things like boating, docks, rocks, and things like that. But zebra mussels can have an even bigger impact as well. Zebra mussels can get into pipelines and different sorts of underground pipe work as well and cause even more backups and worry for local residents. Zebra mussels have been in the area and a concern since about the 1980s. Another concern is milfoil. Milfoil has also been in the area since about the 1980s and possibly even before going back to the 1950s. Milfoil is a plant that grows up from the bottom and creates a mat-like surface on the surface of a lake. This causes problems for things like boats, swimmers, and different recreational sports on a lake as well. It can also kill off many fish, fish populations that feed on things that need the, the light to shine into the water to grow. Another concern is spiny, spiny sea fleas as well. These are a type of zooplankton that come from the region or the northeast region of Europe. Spiny water fleas are very little and they tend to compete with local fish populations and can cause many to go extinct as well. It can also cause problems for fishermen getting in, into things like rods and reels and the eye hooks of, of reels as well. Other concerns are different types of invasive species such as um, other forms of plants and different forms of fish that are not not natural to the area. This can cause different issues with fish populations as well as swimming and other recreational uses of the lake as well. Looking at these types of issues such as invasive species, trash, crime, and natural capital all together, it's clear that value is a huge part of things like, or places like Big Pequon Lake. Big Pequon Lake is home to very concerned residents as well as visiting residents, uh, visiting populations as well. The concern that a public access would devalue the lake is a real one, not only in property value but also in recreation and informational system value. With studies like natural capital, it can be seen that the devaluation of the lake is not only monetary but it is also devaluation in public good.